Good morning and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Got a quick bulletin for you today in regards to space junk. Yes, I talk about that a lot on this channel, but it has been a very troubled time in regards to space junk and our activities in low Earth orbit. First of all, of course, we had the damage to the Soyuz capsule, which led to lots of inconveniences and frankly danger for the astronauts on the ISS. Hopefully that's all going to be resolved very soon, but all of the indications suggest that it was a piece of space junk that collided with the Soyuz capsule, resulting in the coolant leak. And then on top of that, we had a near collision. We're talking just a few meters between two very large pieces of space debris that would have created a cataclysmically large cloud of space junk in low Earth orbit that very probably would have created at least a small scale chain reaction of collisions. So we've had a lot of stuff happening in regards to space junk in the space of just a couple of months. And we are frankly living on borrowed time. But fortunately, a SpaceX Falcon 9 deployed a European Space Agency experiment. It was not the first actually of the experiments associated with this piece of technology, this new innovation. It was actually the last proof of concept experiment that needed to be carried out before this technology could actually be put to practical use. In my opinion, it's a very good solution to the space junk problem, an inexpensive solution, a very viable solution, but not a solution that can really be implemented yet. Not because of technology, not even necessarily because of money, but because of politics. Last year, after sending up dozens of Starlink missions, a SpaceX Falcon 9 dispatched a very special payload that may protect the future of Starlink and everything else that we're doing in low Earth orbit, and indeed, everywhere in space beyond that. The Falcon 9 in question deployed what was called a Drag Augmentation Deorbiting System, or a Drag Sail. It was deployed on an ion on satellite carrier built by Deorbit, a company out of Italy. The drag sail was deployed and in turn will deorbit the satellite carrier much more swiftly than the carrier would be able to deorbit itself, therefore proving its capabilities. So how does it work? Well, first of all, it's a scalable drag augmentation device that uses the residual Earth atmosphere present in low Earth orbit, and it's the same thing by by the way, that causes the ISS to gradually drop down towards the atmosphere as well to passively deorbit satellites between 1 and 2,000 kilograms. For the deorbit maneuver, a large surface is deployed, which multiplies the drag effect of the satellite surface significantly. In other words, the drag sail is much larger than the satellite itself, and it slows down the satellite much as a parachute slows down a drag racer. The slower the satellite light goes, the more quickly it drops towards the atmosphere, reducing deorbit time from sometimes around five years to as little as 18 months. Not necessarily the perfect solution, but still one that is very simple and easy to deploy. This has already been tested a number of times in the recent test that was carried out by HPS, by the way, the company that manufactures the satellite out of Germany. Well, this was the last proof of concept test. Now that we know it works, it can be deployed in large numbers to deorbit enormous amounts of space junk without having to worry about the configuration of the satellite in question, whether or not it's magnetic, whether or not it has compatible docking clamps. All that really matters is the size. The Adeo N, for example, is designed for satellites between 1 and 250 kilograms. The Adeo M is for satellites between 100 
600 and 700 kilograms. And finally, the Adeo L is for satellites between 500 and 1500 kilograms. And the sail size can be anywhere between 2 cubic meters and 100 cubic meters and is capable of deorbiting satellites anywhere up to 900 kilometers in altitude. So this is an extremely effective and versatile system for deorbiting satellites. May not be perfect for everything, but it definitely seems to be a good solution for most types of space junk and should be deployed as rapidly as possible now that we know that it works. But of course, nothing is as simple as that, because all of the junk that's up in orbit belongs to somebody, either to a company or, more problematically, to a nation. And of course, the nation that has the most amount of space junk in orbit, aside from perhaps the United States, is the Russians. And of course, the Russians aren't going to let anybody get anywhere near their debris, regardless of whether it's operable or not, especially given the current political climate, and this is one of many reasons why relations need to be normalized with countries like Russia. In spite of everything that's happening in Ukraine right now, and even though Putin doesn't deserve normalized relations at the moment, this is creating very serious problems that could present a much greater threat to the well-being of the Western world than it does to the future of Russia. If a Kessler syndrome or something similar to that happens in low Earth orbit, the economic impact on Western Europe and on the United States and other nations associated with this alliance are going to be utterly devastated, far worse than Russia is going to suffer under similar circumstances. Russia needs to be brought to the negotiating table in order to agree to get rid of all of this. It's certainly in their interest as well, but I'm pretty sure that they know that it's much much more in the interest of their enemies to get this problem taken care of than it is in their own interest, and they are no doubt going to use that as leverage. But that doesn't mean that we just need to give up on pursuing some sort of agreement with Russia. This has to be taken care of before a serious cataclysm strikes in low Earth orbit, having a tremendous impact on the future of our civilization. HPS, Deorbit, and the European Space Space Agency has now demonstrated without question that the technology exists right now to start attacking this problem. It's not even particularly expensive. Most of these drag sails can be contained inside tiny CubeSat launchers. Indeed, the smallest of these drag sails, the Adeo N, which by the way is large enough to cover up to seven square meters worth of space, can be stowed inside 10 cubic centimeters or 1U of a CubeSat launcher, an insignificant space in a satellite launcher that's already pretty small to begin with. So the technology is definitely there. The expense is not very crippling. All that really remains is the politics. The first step would be to get Western countries to sign on to a treaty to allow complete carte blanche access to anybody who wants to deorbit defunct or perhaps even destroyed satellites and the debris associated with them and perhaps even to get China signed on to this given the fact that China has been experimenting with similar technology. Once all of these countries have signed on, they can apply pressure to Russia to do the same. However, Russia is highly unlikely to move forward with anything like this unless there is something resembling normalized relations in the future, which means this war in Ukraine needs to be brought to an end some way, somehow. The longer it goes on, the greater the threat, not only to Russia and the West, but also to every nation and every person on the planet. Please like, please subscribe, once again, getting ever closer to that magic 100k. Please check the description for various ways to support my content, and as always, stay angry about space!